Yes, that was the moment we clinched promotion on Saturday, the 13th of April. Uh, the second pitch invasion on the race course in just 12 months. Uh, welcome, Croissor, to this promotion special episode of Fearless in Devotion. Uh, before we go on to talk about um, that day and, and what it means, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all, the big reveal. Yes, Fearless in Devotion Live is back. Uh, April the 26th, Friday, before the final day against Stockport from 7pm onwards. Tim, why don't you furnish us with the details of what we can expect? Well, Andrew has a lot of the guest details, so I'll get him involved as well. But ultimately, we did one in August before the season, and it was really, really uh, well attended, and it was just a good laugh. So we thought, let's do another one, let's shoe home within. So yeah, we're, we're doing it all again, day before the final game of the season. Bit of a promotion special, so we're going to have guests from the 70s promotion. We're going to have guests from the 92-93 promotion season and also the 2002-2003 promotion season. Who knows, we might get somebody from last season, fingers crossed, from the club we're blagging them. Andy has the full details of the guests because he's done a fair bit of uh, groundwork on this one, so I will pass you on to him. So um, for the 70s, uh, there was only one person that we could go for. Uh, so Mickey Thomas is, is going to do it. And Alan Hill, who's a club store, was, was with us for years. Um, Mickey could probably already also talk about 92, 93, but we've got a few other guests lined up for there. I just need I just need to confirm them. But but the highlights, the highlight is uh, 2002, 2003, where we're reuniting Lee Trundle and Andy Morell. Um, as as the as the guests, what a lethal strike partnership that was! Class. Massive. massive, massive. Looking forward to that. So that will be at the My Squin. Um, how can we people get tickets, Andrew? Uh, well, uh, they they could, um, but literally about an hour ago it sold out. So um, <laughs> we kind of want to we kind of want to thank everybody who's bought one. We weren't expecting that to, to happen. So everybody. Um, sold it out pretty swiftly. Some Rich Watkin at the Myers Greens already said you should do a second night. I'm not sure we're we're ready for an, an Adele Adele style residency at yeah. the Myers Greens just yet. But who knows? Maybe next know, season. Um, yeah, maybe, I mean... maybe. But I mean, ultimately, as as well as, as well as the guests. Excuse me. We're going to have uh, some prizes again, similar to last time. Uh, I think we're not going to do the music this time because there was so much going on as well. So we want to condense it a little little bit more, have a bit more time with the guests. Gonna have a bit of a fan Q and A as well. They can ask, ask ask the guests questions. There will be various stalls selling their their Wrexham related bits and bobs. Um, so that'll be as you come in. So a bit of everything really. It should be a good laugh. Um, and you know, a bit of a bit of a celebration. We may may even have uh, Sunday Darren from our friends over at the uh, Scarf Bagara War uh, Stockport Pod as well. Because let's face it. Both both sets of fans are going to be very happy, regardless of what happens mm. in that final day. You know? So there we are, great stuff. Indeed, Andy, can you get that photo of um, Paul Mullen up, please? Uh, because uh, as mentioned, that will be taking place in the My Squin Fearless in Devotion Live. This podcast, as you know by now, is sponsored by the Fat Boar Bar and Restaurant, and it seems that the players have been enjoying some time at the Fat Boar uh, over the weekend. I don't think we are seeing a repeat of some of last year's antics where I think Ollie Palmer was hanging out the back of a taxi at one point. Um, and what else happened? Liam, didn't you bump into someone having a kebab? Uh, wow. Jacob Mendy's pizza. Yeah. Jacob. And I still, I've still to this day not found out what topping it was, but no one, no one read the name of Andy's WhatsApp. Yeah. Group and, and... <laughs> Good old Andy. Oh. <laughs> And I do that. I'll own the cover again. Just show this your is, phone to the to the camera. You don't. This is email gate again. Right, look. So, <laughs> excellent. Anyway, um, yeah, Mullin is holding court at the Fat Ball um, and having a great time standing on tables, which I didn't think was allowed. So everyone, whenever you're at the Fat Ball, stand on your table because Rich says it's fine. Um, but good for him. And uh, glad the players are having a good time after a pretty relentless season. So let's talk about it. How how are you feeling, Andy? Um, what what kind of day was it? Great performance. Uh, sorry. Great performance. I mean, couldn't get much more convincing than that. I, you know what? I spent the last twenty minutes just checking a, a different score, so I wasn't even watching. I wasn't even watching the, the game. It, it it was a bit weird. 
because I just didn't think we were going to do it. There was too many permutations. I hadn't mentally prepared myself for us to go up. And, you know, even when we were running away with it and it was two or three nil, I was still sort of thinking, well, something's nothing ever goes this much to plan. Something's going to go wrong, uh, much like when I share a screen. Uh, so, um, yeah, when Mansfield sort of got an unassailable lead, we knew we knew Barrow were down to 10 men. It, it, it just didn't really seem real. I, I, I found it quite hard to get myself up. Oh, no, that sounds daft because last season was so, so stressful, right? It was right into the end. You just, we just needed to get out that league. It was, it was such a release of emotion and it was, it was easy to celebrate that. It was a bit harder this time. Uh, no, I'm not, you know, it's not because I'm used to success or anything. It's just, it's just, it came as a bit of a shock. And I think, I think a lot of people felt that. I think Tim, you said to, you said you, you felt the same. Yeah, I think it was just a um, an overwhelming feeling of disbelief because that wasn't the Wrexham way. Whatever the Wrexham way encompasses as an umbrella term, it definitely wasn't that. So I, I, the, the pessimism came out of me prior to the match. I was like, there's no way Lightning can strike twice. We can't do it on home soil, you know, within 12 months twice. It just doesn't work. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, the game was done and dusted, wasn't it, half time? So that was that taken care of. So you, you could afford yourself to look elsewhere, you know, the results. So when it finally started coming through that, you know, Gillingham had, had gone gone a goal up in added time the first half against Barrow, you kind of think, well, that's pretty much should be done and dusted. And then the turnaround from from Mansfield was just unbelievable. And then I like I I I I I didn't even see Jack Marriott's goal. I was too busy being rain thinking, Jesus, I've got to prep some promotion tweets and stuff <laughs> I wasn't quite I wasn't quite almost mentally prepared for it uh so that was the general feeling from a lot of people because yeah. we're not supposed to have it in such a simplified way that we could just yeah. sit down and go soak it up because this is happening yeah and we knew it we knew it for about at least 15 20 minutes mm. of, that, of the final yeah bits of that game. pretty much so, yeah it, it it's was almost just... like we're not entitled to that. That, yeah. that, that. that never happens to us. So how would we know how to celebrate something like that? Well, and and everything has gone. I've free promotions in my life. Yeah, and everything's gone to the wire over the last two years, hasn't it? So I must admit, like, yeah, yesterday came as a bit of a shock. Liam, I mean, last season, uh, you know, the boys that I talked about, just that release. Um, did yesterday feel the same? Were you on the pitch? Uh, well, I can't confirm or deny because it's a very naughty thing to do. Um, but no, I... I I was saying to people, I so before the game, I was going up to everyone saying, no, there's no chance we're going to do it um, on Saturday. No chance we're going to do it. And then, I don't know, it was just something as I was in town on the day. I, I don't believe in any sort of like fate or religion or anything like that, but just gradually felt this bit of a buzz. And I was like, I think something's happening here. Um, and then get up to the ground and it, it just grew from there. And it just it fell, all fell into place far too easily for Wrexham. Uh, which just never happens whatsoever. But I would say that I I do feel like I actually enjoyed it more than last season. Last season was the panic, the stress, the going through the emotional ringer and also the weight of all those years down in the National League, whereas this was just, I think, just pure joy, really. And, yeah, I was on the pitch and I could tell how out of it Andy was because he told me to get down off a, off a drinks cooler box like like he was my dad or something like that. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, it, it it couldn't have been much of a polar opposite to last season, could, last year, could it, in terms of the Boreham Wood game, you know, going behind after 30 seconds and thinking, oh, crap, we've got to turn this round. Um, and yes, there was a, a walk in the park, uh, relatively speaking, in a way, no disrespect to Forest Green. Um, there's some great scenes. Beautiful, there's a beautiful symmetry there that Forest Green were one of the sort of clubs that stopped us getting out uh, mm. when we were fan zone because they they had a... They had a benefactor, had a sugar daddy, and okay, yeah, no, I know we've got a lot of investments, but them going down and us going up, I, I just thought that's quite quite a symmetry, and also Fleetwood going down. So you know, yeah. as Alan Partridge would say, needless to say, we had the last laugh. Well said, well said, um, and not though we're vindictive or bitter at all. So no, yeah. hasn't been confirmed yet, Fleetwood, but it, it's it's pretty much should be soon. So yeah, that is nice. That oh is no, very no. Nice. 
Oh, for a tainted, them. A tainted title for them. Terrible, yeah. terrible. Um, Tim, there were some great scenes uh, after the match, weren't there? Um, with Mullin again, more iconic photos of Mullin <laughs> on on uh, a top a huge crowd. Yeah, and 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 why not? I mean, if you look at what he's done the last few months. The, the the goals and assists he scored they've been absolutely pivotal in in kind of getting over that early part of the year the lull that we hit sort of January time so he deserves it um he loves it you know just it's just brilliant he's just the figurehead in terms of from from a player point of view for from the club and it, it was just amazing I mean it, it, again he just pitches in he he basically sets the bar for the work rate in that team hundred percent. It, he's the one that sets it. He sets the tone. He sets the tempo, and everybody else follows. So it was, it was great to see him doing it again, leading from the front. And it was just even now, I, I I kind of feel like we're almost underwhelming it, like we're selling it a bit short. But we're not. It's just because it's comfortable. It's a warm and fuzzy feeling that yesterday, in a weird way, at some point during that game, there was a sense of inevitability about the entire thing. And I I just. It, it's it's weird territory because correct me if I'm wrong. I've not checked this. I was meaning to check it, but this must be the earliest must be the earliest point we've secured promotion with two games spare. It can't be far off that. You know, I, mm. I, I genuinely can't think. I think seventy eight didn't seventy seven seventy eight really walk away with it. Probably yeah, maybe that one. But I, I mean, know they came close the year before, didn't they? And and didn't do it. But I think they. So not in our lifetimes, basically. If you're a if you're young whippersnappers like us. Um, this is the most comfortable position we've been in. Um, and I mean, well, I, I think get, don't get used to it as well because you listen to all the uh, accepted wisdom and it's a big step up to League One. We're going to struggle. Oh, we'll find out where we are in League One. Parky's ceiling is League One, even though he's been promoted twice from League One. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we can get used to it. Who knows? Uh, just uh, by the way, uh, we didn't walk away with it in 77-78. Uh, um, there we go. We only we did it by... Yeah. Well, we listen by three points. Listen to question. When did we last walk away with it? Uh, who, who's if we have any ninety-year-old fans who listen to listen to us, let us know. Um, anyway, how did we celebrate, Liam? Did it compare to last year's antics? Uh, I wasn't up till half five, and I wasn't with Jacob Mandy in a pizza place at half five either. So I hope you like... weren't standing on a drinks box either, Liam. Well, yeah. I well, told you, you about that. I thought you were going to spank me when you said, "Get down off there, boy." <laughs> um, but now I went back into town. Um, we went to Rough Hands Tap, which is the new um, sort of craft beer place in town. Uh, Andy and Phil, run by Andy and Phil Galanders. Um, that was a good atmosphere in there. People still going, and then made our way to uh, Drunk Monk in Overton Arcade and. There's some embarrassing video out there of me singing on top of a chair, so may it never see the light of day ever again. Who do you think you are, Paul Mullin? <laughs> yeah, well, I think in that moment I, I maybe thought I was, yeah. Stop standing on things. I, we know you're the shortest <laughs> member, but come well, on. That's that's the thing. I, I'm at a disadvantage, so yeah. I need not a visual aid. What's, what's the equivalent for someone who's very short? A that's vertical physical, aid, maybe. Physical aid? Yeah, physical exactly. Physical aid. <laughs> you do indeed. Uh, Andy, how did you celebrate? Uh, yeah, uh, nice going straight after. Obviously, we stayed a bit for the, for the celebration. It's good to see the players' kids on the uh, on the pitch. Has anyone seen that tackle? I think it was it James McLean's last I thought game. it was Toza's kid. Everyone's saying how it's McLean's, it right? but okay. I thought it was Toza's. All right. Absolute cruncher that. Sign that lad up now. I've um, not seen it. What did he do? Oh, he's just—they're playing a game of football, and the tackle comes in about ooh, knee high from about from the side. Wow. Absolutely, Ben Thatcher really style. Cool. Love it. Um, so yeah, went to the mice going uh, a couple of pints there. I was going to go home. Well, I planned to go. Obviously, I planned to go home to see my mum and stuff, but you can't when you've just been promoted. So I stayed out in the mice going. Went down to the turf for one. That one turned into about three and a half hours. Uh, and then we went down to Top Spoons um, with a few few of the lads. Tim, I saw you there. Um, we had a good time. I'm glad was, you saw uh, me there. I took you home at the end of the night. I took you <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you saw me there. Though. Thanks for that. Poor Pat Gilpin. She was uh, she was desperate for you to come home. Okay. She made me a pizza. I, maybe a Carlos I, pizza from uh, from Aldi. I, 
I knew you were smashed because about seven times during that entire journey, from the moment I told you, I was, I'll give you a lift to the moment you got you that. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. <laughs> It's, like, it's all right. Don't I worry just about know it. how bad it is to get a taxi in town. It's, it's, it's an amazing. absolute nightmare. It was great. So, no, you thank signed, you for that. Then, then you signed off. I know we have a few disagreements sometimes, but I do love you. I, it's a great day. I was like, off you go. <laughs> like, no, I know I'm drunk if I said I loved you. <laughs> but um, yeah, to, 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 to dial it back, um, my is Gwyn, um, and then I went home because I had dog dad guilt. Came back. Realised mum and dad were happy to keep him there. I was like, ah, right, see you later, have fun. And I went back out. Um, so I went back out. And didn't know where the spoons is last order. It was like 1 a.m. So me, Andy, uh, Wayne from the turf, a few other people. It was just, again, it was just just stunned because it, it's probably only taken until today for it all to sink in, really. We've looked at the table. We've watched the highlights back. We've seen the players celebrating. If you go on the, uh, the club shop website, they've already got the promotion T-shirts ready to go. With a little uh, pyramid of the football league, and it's saying we're here with an arrow to League One. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just great, isn't it? It's just amazing. Yeah, so good. Um, I was getting not to be there. Um, unfortunately, I have a wife who's about to pop, so I was watching from afar. Um, uh, you might have to explain what what about to pop means. Oh, with a child. Okay, fair <laughs> hopefully, enough. Uh, yeah, not not in any other way. Um, but yeah, so but yeah great to watch but yeah it did make me very jealous and um because last yeah last year was so great and uh watching everyone on the pitch your dad yeah. there no my dad wasn't there either i think oh. none of us were totally expecting um no, we're, we're i wasn't expecting it to happen yes uh, on there was Saturday. a few people there was a few people there who I, I would have liked to have been there so a couple of london reds dan weaver lewis uh, i don't think barry jones was there either um even nathan salt wasn't there because he couldn't get the same off work. you wanted oh, no those guys there yeah, you wanted those guys there because that Rob Ryan read lot of part timers though, really, aren't they? When you think about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's that pod wars now. <laughs> we'll start that. We've sold out our rent. There's no need for 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 shade to be thrown. Um, Rob McInerney's dad was there, which I didn't realise until uh, oh, excellent this morning. So oh, there's, a, there's a link there. Yeah, right. it's just it's great because you know the owners loved it, and um, I showed Andy like. Um, Ryan Reynolds sent, not me, I say us, the the, the fearless Instagram a message because I just you know, just sent him a congratulatory message. He sent one back. And, do you want me to read it, Andy? Should I read it or should I keep it private? I mean, I don't, I, I don't think it's... I, I think it would be fine to share, wouldn't it? I, yeah. I, as long as he's not divulging any private medical information. No, no, no not at all. I, th- I think it's one of those, I, you know, I don't normally... I wouldn't normally sort of share things like this, but it is a nice message. And he basically just said, um, I'm not even on my body now. He says dying to not be in Wrexham, but I think it means dying to be in Wrexham. I'm shooting a film. I'm editing Deadpool during the nights. If I could, I'd be living over there right now. Congratulations to you and enjoy every single second of this gorgeous moment. I've been in tears for three hours. Oh, you know, just taking so like a minute of his day. To stand up, you know, oh. and, 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 and it's not lip service. The, the, that's genuine. That's from the heart. We we see it time and time and time again. And you know, there's going to be a big party because no doubt they're going to be in town for for the Stockport game. Yeah. Do do North Americans uh, celebrate better than us? Because I am I, am I crap at celebrating? Am I am, am I not used to celebrating like big sporting achievements? And I, so I don't know how to. I almost feel like I like. I don't deserve two <laughs> promotions in, in in two years. Uh, they Americans just seem to. Oh, obviously, you know, Ryan's Canadian, but you know, North Americans just seem a lot. Just get it, get to celebrate. Uh, they're better at it. I'm already just, concerned at the levels of entitlement. What they're going to be like this last next season? If this year was bad and we had like a mini meltdown in sort of February, March, and we still got promoted with two games to spare, what's it going to be like when we're mid table in League One? Well, in, I don't, uh, I don't think February. you do know how to celebrate, Andy, because you ruin other people's celebrations. That, well, that's all get, I'm going to say. Drink box was not a load bearer, Liam. <laughs> not a load bearing box. You could have gone straight through that, <laughs> and you would have ruined it for not only yourself but everyone around there. I'm Think sorry. Safety. I'm, I'm sorry to the people of Wrexham. Um, let's talk about our favourite moments from yesterday. Um, Tim put something out on the Twitter uh, to hear all our listeners' favourite moments. Liam, why don't you run us through some of the some of the best ones? Yeah, sure. So Andrew Morris, who I know is a massive Wrexham fan, 
said he walked down from his seat in the Wrexham Lager upper stand um, to be near the bench on the 85th minute. Um, just as he was looking over when the final whistle came, he saw, got a great picture of uh, Ollie Palmer hugging his dad. So he said it was a really touching moment, followed by pure joy and legging it onto the pitch. So that's quite a nice one. Um, who else have we got? Well, this is the confusion now. People, Carl Griff is saying, not sure if it's been covered, but I'd sign James McLeanson after his performance on the pitch after the game and during the celebrations. He looks like a chip off the old block. So I, there was me thinking it was Tozer's lad, but maybe it was um, McLean's. Uh, Danny Gruff says the players celebrating in front of the tech end and everyone's singing the individual chants, whilst a few feet away, McLean's little lad was slide tackling all the other kids. Um, oh, oh, this is embarrassing. One, one of these mentions me. Should I should I still read it out? Um, I, oh, yeah, I'll go on. Uh, Liam Stokes Massey says, post-game has to be Liam conducting the whole arcade outside Drunk Monk. Marriott rolls the ball tardy. Oh, that's I'm, embarrassing, met, isn't it? Met one of your family members uh, in the turf. He's, um, I started giving him a shout out to Tudor and the um, and the Patagonia Reds. So I think he's uh, a relation of yours, isn't he, Liam? Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, Simon, Do you know Co someone from Patagonia? I don't know someone from Patagonia, but he knows. He's sort of close friends with you know the Patagonians that came over um, yeah. recently. Yeah, he knows oh. them. Quite well, so yeah. Ooh. Big shout out to the watch, He says they watch every uh, every fearless, so nice to give him a shout out. Yeah, yes. definitely. Um, Mr. Simon Cook, friend of the podcast, said spending time with family and friends throughout the day and night, seeing so many people that I spent time watching Racks in League One with, as well as new friends I met along the way. I love this town. Uh, I'll do one more. Jonah Devitt, uh, who sits couple of rows in front of me said when the news of the scores at MK and Gillingham came through, the noise just went up another level. Also, my lad, age nine, being fed up of pitch invasions and promotions. <laughs> what a world we now live in. <laughs> that reminds me, I did see someone saying to his kids outside the uh, Lager Club after the game, saying, you know, enjoy this, enjoy this while I can. And they were like, why? Why do I need to in enjoy this while I can? And he was like, well, we don't always get moments like this. <laughs> so I think it's just a cynical older generation reminding the kids yeah, yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah, I think it is sometimes important. I think early in the season, you know, when we were having that rut and some of the frustrations, you know, with some of the performances, particularly away, sometimes to remember that these are the halcyon days and to to try and try and enjoy them a bit more because we'll be talking about them in twenty thirty years time, I'm sure. Um, come, we don't want to talk too much about next season and what we got to look forward to in this podcast. We're trying to celebrate more. So on that note. Can we talk about Phil Parkinson, Tim? You know, how much Absolutely. of an achieve, how much of an achievement is it? It's massive. Massive. It's his fifth promotion as, as a manager. <clears throat> I had this discussion yesterday with a few people, and when he's appointed, the, there's a little bit of skepticism because you think, well, it didn't quite work out for him at Sunderland, blah de blah, blah. And the other promotions were quite a while ago, and all this talk has the game move on, but he stuck with it. He's, he's kept. He's kept with the times. You know, a few people will say otherwise. He's had his critics about the formation and the the rigidity of that, but it's it's massive. And you know what? It's it's not just his achievements as as a manager. It's him as a person. Like if you watched his 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 post match, well, just immediate immediately after after the final whistle, they, they, they stuck a camera on him and just give your thoughts, Phil. And he's so it's so heartfelt and so humble. He genuinely loves it, you know. And you always get like, like you know, I'm not comparing him to Klopp, but you know, you, you sometimes you'll get a manager that fits a club for whatever reason. Klopp's, Klopp's loved at Liverpool, and he's fitted in there as, as the perfect one for him. It was a similar thing with with Chris Coleman in the Wales setup. Sometimes it just works, you know. It just does. And we've had so many managers come and go that that stability is key. It's crucial. You can you can give him money, you can solidify that team bond, but having that consistency and giving him time, which not many managers get, is key to this success. Massive. They could have pulled the trigger that first year and said, we didn't go up, see you later, thanks. But his long-term plan, which still continues to be a long-term plan, it, it, you know, it's, it's coming true. It's coming true. The players love him. 
We watch Elliot, Elliot leave. Watch any player uh, interview yesterday. Watch Elliot Lee's. It's great. It will fill your heart. Elliot Lee's presser is brilliant. He's smiling all the way through it. Talks about Parky, and he basically said how Parky had kept the entire boys grounded that entire week. No talk promotion. Just get the job done, and everything else will take care of itself. That is good management at any level. And I just, yeah. I just, I, I think he's, I think he's brilliant. What he's achieved is brilliant. Yeah, you know, there were some nice comments actually on Radio Five Live today from Joby McEnough, who said something similar. You know, in terms of yeah, you can have all the backing in the world, but how many teams have we seen get loads of backing but fall? at the first hurdle and, and fail to get where they need to be because, as you know, you get too many egos in the dressing room, something doesn't click, the boss can't get these sort of disparate groups of of journeymen to, to work together. And, you know, that was something that we were concerned about, wasn't it? You know, when we started getting the checkbook out, but it's not even been a problem once. Um, Andy, um, you know, in terms of, we don't look too much ahead to next season, but, um, you know, League One, uh, Parky sort of almost back, at where he should be, right? Well, it's where he thought, you know, he didn't want to take a conference job. It was a massive gamble for him because if this went wrong, where does he go after that? It's, it's hard to, to to get back in the league if you failed in the conference. So, yeah, he will feel that this is the level he should be managing at. Um, I think echo what, what, what Tim says about Parky as the man. I think he... He's the one who's been able to, you know, it's a large squad. And some some people like Billy Waters and Callum McFadstein haven't even been in the squad to try and keep those those players motivated through the season. Obviously, you know, what was went on loan, but it's still it's still a very very large squad with egos that Parky has melded together. And they you can tell how together they are and how how how, how much unity and team spirit is there. And I think that's Parky picking the right players. To come in in the first point, you know, Oli Palmer might not be everyone's cup of tea, but he's absolutely vital to that team and that team spirit. And you see how much better he, he Mullin plays when when Palmer's plays. And one thing about Palmer, it's a slight, it's a slight aside. I mean, I was a couple of months ago, I was dead set that he was probably wasn't gonna wasn't gonna stay. I'm I'm not so sure now. It's almost like he's he's taking out goals from his game, uh, and he's not as selfish there. But what he does now is just work, work for the team. He occupies defenders. He creates space for other people to run into. The likes of Mullin, Lee, and and Cannon um, work as well because Palmer does that unselfish work. Um, I think when we sort of look at, at League One, Parky will know. We all know Parky's not going to change the formation. So what can Parky do to evolve the team? Well, I think you can see that in what he's done with the back three. He's finally sort of settled on a back three and they're all ball players and they're all, isn't it great that your centre half like Tom O'Connor can start an attack straight away and he's not just lumping it forward. Uh, And I think that's how he's evolving the side. And I think that sort of back three, which I would keep together for for next season. um, Now, I think that's, that's a league one back three and could even go a little bit higher than that because they're all comfortable on the ball. They're all pretty good defenders and they work together as a unit. And that's how Parky slightly evolved the team there. I think there are other ways he can evolve it. He might want to look at, at the wing back situation and he might want to bring in someone, someone pacey up front, but you know, it's a, it's a showing of <laughs> now he's had that team together for a couple of seasons. He's had his players in He's managed to just tweak things here and there, and made us made us made us a much better unit. Uh, and that is a massive credit to him. Well done. Can, can I just have just add one more thing to that? I think Rishi mentioned it earlier on when you mentioned Parky's ceiling. Um, I can't forgive me. I can't remember who said it on, on Twitter, but. Somebody said we need to get away from the fact that people, well, not the fact that the this narrative of of what Parky's ceiling is is it is it just League One? What we need to focus on is what clubs could come in for Parky, mm. and you know, that, that it's kind of a it's a thought we don't give much to because why would he go anywhere else? He's well back, blah blah blah. But anybody anybody who wins successive promotions is going to be looked at. You know, they just are. Uh, and and I think sometimes that, that's a little bit overlooked and, and almost a slight on what he's achieved, really. So, yeah, just thought I'd point that out. 
he's on mute. He does this. Sorry, it's a good point. <laughs> and I think you could actually say that about all three of the managers promoted from League Two. I know Mansfield haven't confirmed it yet, but it's pretty much nailed on. Um, Clough, um, uh, Chaloner and Parkey are all kind of quite unfashionable managers. You know, they're not they're not your your bloody ex goals nerds or whatever you call them. Um uh not county, that's what they're called. <laughs> yeah, I sound and, like an absolute hand. dinosaur and I'm and I'm proud of it. But um and, and honestly ironically I'm quite pleased about it because I'm not too worried about people coming in for him. But you're right, that's what it should be. But I've had a couple of the reason I brought it up is I've had a couple of comments recently being like, Oh, you're getting promoted then. When are you gonna get rid of Parky, do you think, you know? And I and I, I'm just like, well, why would you? It doesn't make any sense. He's 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 been the championship before. He's got two promotions from League One. Um, Liam, do you think it's time that 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 bashing? I know you're, we're preaching to the choir here, but you know, do, do, do what do you think it, he'll need to do to earn that respect? Maybe perf perform next year, right? I mean, in in theory, he's already done plenty enough to to earn that respect. I mean, I'll admit to right at the start of his tenure being a bit skeptical, like you say, it wasn't the the sort of modern manager that people might well I, I hate that term actually so let's not use that but you know what i mean you know not the sort of fashionable manager per se um yeah ex that's... expected goals nerds yeah exactly yeah that's exactly it but i don't know there's one just going back to something on the documentary that i would have always been intrigued to see which wasn't included i think on parkey's request was that phone call which lasted for an hour or however long it did between him and rob McElhenney and how did he convince him to join because actually as times evolved it has actually looked like the perfect fit for him so it turned out to be a good decision for all parties and I just I like how he's very sort of methodical in his approach never too high never too low he's the sort of the balance the equilibrium that us Wrexham fans don't really have you know like you said we were having a meltdown a month or two ago but he never really seemed he didn't get frustrated by it he didn't you know when fans turn a little bit he just get someone with a job I think sort of just always looking at the end game um, and that's partly why like jokes aside that's why I went to the sort of the bench area when I went to celebrate because I always think you know as much as the players are important I think without that man mm. sort of in the in the dugout you know none of this happens whatsoever and people say oh he's got advantages but that can sometimes make things more difficult I think about Forest Green how long it took them to go up when they had big budgets in mm. in the conference it's not a guarantee of success yeah. so I'm just intrigued to see how he's going to change things yet again you know who will he bring in will he still look to bring, have the experience of McLean and Fletcher I think there's two two decisions there to be had mm. um, and people have mentioned pace a lot I wonder if some of those issues got addressed in January or you know is that is that another area we need to improve but I'm, I'm looking forward to basically seeing how he's going to deal with it and hopefully be the man to take us up again you know, yeah. whether it be, I, I half expect consolidation, but I'm just fascinated to see what he does. Yeah, we've got a lot, uh, uh, over the next few weeks, we'll be talking a lot about next season, I think. We don't want to do too yeah. much of it today, but let's just uh, maybe for a moment have a think about what are those away days? Who are we looking forward to playing? Where are we looking forward to going? Um, Tim, any in particular that sort of stand out to you? Well... There's, there's there's plenty of sizable nice grounds to go to, you know, Charlton Athletic. I don't think I've ever seen us play Charlton in, in my lifetime. I've never been to the Valley. You've got Reddins, Medeski Stadium, huge. Wigan, Blackpool, you know, Blackpool away on a August bank holiday weekend would be lovely. Um it's just it's just nice to go back to stadia, modern, more modern stadia that you know we're gonna have bigger allocations for. There's a lot of Southern-based teams, so I'm sure, you know, yourself and Andy probably be happy about, you know. The Very happy. Northamptons, the, the Leighton Orient, Stevenage, Exeter, so on and so forth. Obviously, there's some big teams that could potentially come down as well. Birmingham, Shall man. Birmingham. Birmingham. Blows, Birmingham blows my mind. They yeah. It's, 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 so it's, you know, that alone should tell you that it's going to be a, a real big test. It's a real big test, and obviously we'll, we'll, we'll discuss more down the path in, into how we're going to fare, but... Yeah, it's it, it's it's where we feel we belong at, at this point. We've got there in pretty much double quick time. You know, if if they'd have said, "Oh, we can try and get the championship within five years," then we're on schedule. It would seem so. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing. Um, it's, it's just nice to to go to these um, these grounds that mm. a lot of people haven't had the chance to go to before. So yeah, but yeah, Charlton, Charlton is a big one for me, and obviously the small small matter of Shrewsbury Town. Well, yes, indeed, in a regular season, um, Andy, I'm guessing Reading and Charlton stood out for you as well. Charlton was the one I was looking at just because, like Tim, I've never been there. Uh, I I think there's two London grounds I've not done. I've not done Sellers Park and I've not done the Valley. So it'd be nice to uh, just to scratch one of those off. Um, also, Exeter, weirdly, just because, again, mm. I've never been there. And it all, I, I, it's I, a lovely I part of the world. There. Yeah, mm. I went past there on the way to Torquay and it looked it looked great. Mm. So maybe, mm. yeah, maybe a, a nice uh, train journey down to Exeter, watch it be on a Tuesday night now. They still got the Michael Jackson stand there. Do you remember that? That was weird. Yeah, it was. A, uh, was that Yuri Geller, wasn't it? Yuri Geller, the the spoon oh, bender of yesterday, yeah. decided that um, he, he was good mates. Basically, anybody who doesn't know Yuri Geller was like uh, got like a psychic person. He was able to bend spoons with the power of his mind. If you believe certain tabloid papers, anyway, he was best mates he with certain a lot with Yuri Geller. Yeah, yeah. He we was leave the Daily Star Michael at Jackson. this, mentioning tabloids, but, by the way. But Michael Jackson ticked up with Yuri Geller to St. James's Park, isn't it? It's called Exeter's Ground. Um, and then they, they built a Michael Jackson statue, and you should see it. It was grim. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's no longer there. It would be ridiculous if it was. Yeah, that that might have been Fulham, you know. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Well, look, <laughs> sorry, I, is it, Sorry. What, there's something to do with Exeter as well. It doesn't matter. He he came down. He, yeah, he came down um, and they brought some local school children to meet him. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Liam, any any oh. games that you're particularly looking forward to? Uh, the Yuri Geller derby is the is the one for me. Uh, <laughs> no, I, well, it, a lot depends. It, it's still taking shape about who's going to be in the league, but I would mm. love to recreate... Our three two away win at Sheffield Wednesday because that was one of my earliest away yeah. days and still still one of my favourites. So if that opportunity comes up, I think that would be number one for me. I don't do yeah. many away days as you well know, but I might have to rectify that with yeah. somewhere like Blackpool away next season. Looks quite nice as well. That's always a good laugh. You know what? I'm looking at the bottom of the championship again, and obviously Rotherham are, Rotherham are coming down, and then the next two could be any one of Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield, Birmingham City, Stoke City, Queens Park Rangers. Um, so two of those. Queens probably... Park Rangers is a bus ride away from me. Honestly, it's that's like the closest ground. There I hope go. they don't come down. Then I hope they I hope they stay up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's some real, real um, juicy matches that I look forward to. Um, Shall we move on uh, to talk about the players? Uh, so the team of the year awards are happening, or are we or are we doing our own? When is the when is the team? We've got the League Two team of the year, haven't we, Andy? And we got some Wrexham players in that. Yeah, I think uh, Big Arthur's in it. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. anyone anyone else from Wrexham. Lee, Lee. 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 Oh, is he good? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has anyone got that list? That'd be quite interesting to to see it. Um. Should we do a Wrexham, our sort of Wrexham team of the season? Yes. So yeah, I, I think I'll go first in goal. It has to be. It has to be Arthur, doesn't it? I mean, just, there's no. I other. was thinking Rob Lington. Uh, okay, yeah, he did do well. Yeah, hmm. um, or, or or maybe uh, Nicholas. Um, <laughs> no, big Arthur in goals. Back three. Yeah. Back three. It's a, that's a tough one. You know, that's a tough one. I think O'Connell probably. For his last couple of months, has shared it above above Toza for the centre position. Yeah. I think you can't look past Max on the right. You really can't, just because he's come on so much. And Amazing. and then it's and then what do you reckon, Tim? Do you reckon it's O'Connor on the on the left? Or I mean, Boyle so was O'Connor. such an erratic. Yeah. O'Connor. Uh, O'Connor. Yeah. The, the team the team that you that, that was put out yesterday and the day before is the team. That's the team. What about basically. Mendy yeah. fully fit? Is it not um, Mendy left wing back and McLean in the middle? Could make an then you have to take out Lee, don't you? And I think you can't take out Lee. You can't have two. And Lee was back to his very best yesterday. Yeah, he yesterday. was, yeah. 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 He had a little rut, didn't he? And he's been class the last few weeks. Yeah, you need you need McLean in that team. And so the, the easiest way to put him in is on the left. I think Barnett on the on the right. Uh, yeah, the midfield three. Evans when fit is is class. I do actually think George will end up playing in the in the back three. I, I do eventually, yeah. um, but but he's been good for us this season. Um, 
we've also got, I think, you know, Lee and Cannon. And then it's Palmer and Mullen, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of it picks itself, I think, to be honest. Like the the sort of Palmer Mullen question, which <clears throat> earlier in the season we might not have been so sure over, but now I don't I, you wouldn't change that whatsoever, would you? No, you change his game a little bit. Mm. Um, shall we talk about um the person who gets all the attention, but deservedly so, Paul Mullin. I mean, what a goal record. What an end, again, showing sort of how valuable he is in those big moments. I mean, he scored 23 goals now in the league. You know, and I would probably five or six games ago, he was way down the goal scoring charts in League Two. He was sort of ninth or tenth. Um, and now here he is second, only three goals behind Langstaff and having played seven fewer games. Um Incredible running, Liam. He's been just unbelievable the last couple of months, hasn't he? Yeah, incredible. Like when you think of the start to the season he had, where he missed how many weeks was it? Any again? I can't, I can't... It was a month or two, wasn't it? About two months, maybe. Yeah, it was he getting came on for... back in October, didn't he? Yeah, he... So about seven weeks, what? I think it was. Um, and obviously, we had this thing of when he came back, we were all thinking, you know, Christ, this injury's affecting him, which clearly it would do because punctured lung and several broken ribs. But just as think, just as it's come to the crunch stage of the season, he's really, really come into his own again. He's hassling players. You know, he ran down that goal against Crawley on Tuesday night. I watched that back and I thought I was watching it in double speed, just like the the pace he got to get on the end of the book that um, pass back. So yeah, and also it's it's just a mentality thing more than anything else. I mean, I won't touch on um, last week's debate too much about <laughs> Mullin because I think Tim's got his tattoo lasered off, but. Um, <laughs> um but now he's I think I do wonder you know sort of elite players they they often have to have some form of create some form of conflict and I just wonder if what he was doing there at the end of the last the sort of end of last week was just giving something to spur him on because someone said fucking hell on Tuesday night he really looks like a man possessed basically um and in those crucial games like last few games you know he, he's not leaving anything to chance yeah, you know, he takes his well, two chances. Well, McElhenney said that was, uh, I think I saw him on social media this week saying, this is my favourite Paul Mullen goal. Because as you say, three goals up, nothing really, no need to do it. And yet there he is harrying down uh, and getting a goal out of nothing from pure hard work, pure determination. It just sums him up, didn't it, Tim? Oh, it's just just unbelievable, isn't he? It's, it's just, it, like I said, I mean, you kind of run out of superlatives for him really now. I mean, what what else... Is there left to be said that hasn't already been said? He's just he continues to raise his game, and when he has, when he dares to have a game where he doesn't score, in the Doncaster game, he was he was fairly well shackled. Has to be said, he came back with a vengeance. It's as simple as that. You know, you can't keep a good man down for too long. And I mean, for him to be so close to to the top of that that scoring chart is just outrageous. It really is. It, it is overall game. Is second and second to none, and you know, it's very rare that you get to uh, witness club legends ply their trade in front of your eyes week in week out. It's usually a case of oh they've been and gone and, and they move on. And we used to throw the term legend round probably quite almost too easily. You know, people that were here for a, a short time made a bit of an impact in a, in a an average or substandard team, and off they went. Our oh, legend. No, I mean what we're seeing now is. Is ridiculous, and I, I I firmly believe he'll probably see out the rest of his playing days with us. Class, let's hope so. Never want to stop watching him play. But we're going to break our rule um, about not talking about next season very quickly, just for a couple of minutes, just to talk about a post from Lee Toza, Ben Toza's brother, who um, tweeted today, whatever happens at the end of your contract at Wrexham, I'm extremely proud of you. I've enjoyed following you and three promotions in four seasons tops off a great career. Dad will be beaming from above. Um, do we think he's going to be kept on, Andy? Uh, probably not, um, I, mm. uh, which is a shame because I think he, the first season that, that, that Toza came to us, he was a long throw guy. You know, he was Mr. Long Throw. The second season, we saw what a great defender he was oh, and how really, important yeah. he was to the team. Because, and I think Parky said this a couple of weeks ago on, on this podcast. 
Toza is the guy who gets the ball all the time and he has to be brave with it. And he has to, you know, he has to think what he's going to do and start the attacks because he was the, probably your only ball playing centre half for, for large swathes of, uh, of the time. Um, so, you know, Parkey said that he doesn't get the credit he deserves for, for being so, so brave and wanting the ball all the time. And I think, I think he was a very, very, important part of our evolution. He never let anyone down. When he came in for Notts County at the drop of a hat, he had a superb game. He's obviously dealt with the death of his father, which he takes a lot of a lot of credit for because he kept going and he kept leading by example. That's the measure of the man. I would be sorry to see him go, but maybe his family still settled down south that a move back down there might might suit him a, a little better. It'd be lovely if we could keep him on, but to be honest, it would be more of a bit part role and at his, his age. Does he really want to do that? Probably not. We've also found that George Evans got a long throw. Yeah, he's a, he's a real leader, isn't he? And I think, you know, a couple of players coming to the end of long contracts, post-30, uh -huh. you, know, you, you could see him not being kept on. Um, one last person to talk about, Big Arthur. Liam? Uh, is Big Arthur going to stay, do you think? I hope so. Um, I'm enjoying all the players doing their thing, sort of similar that they did to Foster last season, uh, although we hope it doesn't sort of transpire quite the same. Um, but telling him to sign on, he seemed to be enjoying himself after the match, doing his little dance on the pitch. Um, I hope he signs. I, I just don't know. At the moment, I don't... I really can't tell whether he's going to sign or not. You know, I'm... I'm I think... The fact that we've gone up obviously boosts the chances of that somewhat. And I'm led to believe that we've put a decent offer to him. Um, I think it will cost us money because I'm all right in thinking that we would have to pay Arsenal some form of money, even though he's out of contract. Yeah, he's, um, because... he's under the age of 24, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So um, would... One thing I will say on Arthur, right. Well, okay. If Arthur, where's Arthur going to go? So if it's another League One club, well, surely we're the better option for him because he knows us. He knows he'll be number one. Tim's sang about bloody 40 songs about him. So, you know, he knows that the fan base are absolutely with him. Um, so then if he thinks, right, it's a championship club, if he goes to like some Middlesbrough, or is he going to is he going to play every week? I, I don't know. I mean, he knows that he will be our number, our number one keeper. Um, the other option is, is he going to go abroad? Because he's done Stone Gratz before and, and was quite successful there. But at his age, does he does he want to try his hand in Europe? Maybe that's for, for later on in his career. He can do, you know, he, he can come to us and he can grow with the club. Where we want to be is where Arthur thinks his his career is. That's, that's you know, we want to get to the championship and, and maybe even beyond. And that's what that's what Arthur should be aiming for as well. It's, it's just someone someone clip that up and send it to Arthur now get it to his agent Andy Gilpin has spoken if that doesn't persuade okay. him no I mean it that was you you've you've I, I think you're right I think he's I think he's coming Tim is he coming a hundred percent hundred percent not in not in not in not in the, the sexual up. speaking of not anyway in, not, in the, not in the sexual double entendre that Liam's Let, laughing about let's uh, let's <laughs> Andy mentioned you've sung 40 songs about a Conquo. <laughs> it's time for song nope. number 41. No, nope. nope. it's not. No, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you promised no. us. I didn't last promise. Night at Lower Spoons at you, midnight. You and Nick, Nicola, both said, oh, you've got to do it. I was like, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting you now. I've had a sore throat all day. I've got a swollen okay, hand. Okay, look, that, that's I'll tell fine. you what I'll do. I will do it. I promise you right now, right? Hand on heart. I'll do it next week. I'll have gusto. Okay, that's yeah, fine. I'll be, I'll be full on. Aren't I'm you going to perform go them all back to back at the uh, FID event? I'll, I'll do yeah, like I'll a try do... funny ma master mix. But I'll you've got to do I'll Nelson do... Dorma, Book of a Conquo next week, right? You I'll, really do, first... I'll do a medley. I'll do I'll do a medley next week. I'll practice it. Um, there is a clip of me do well, it hasn't done the rounds, thankfully, of me trying to get my me, 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 me on the go. So, you know, all in good time. All in good time. Right. It'll come but next week. Um, a Conquo Ness and Dorma, yeah, Pavarotti style. Of course, and, and, and right. you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the club put out prior to the end of the season. Arthur signed a three-year deal. Thank you very much. Top stuff. I don't see why he wouldn't stay. I think he loves it. The lads love him. He loves the lads. Top stuff. And Get they could signed. use and they could use your video of you singing Ness and Dorma to to announce the signing. 
hey, if the club want to involve me to that extent, then who am I to say no? Exactly. Um, right, let's rattle through the end of the agenda. I've got a thank you to US Wayne. Can anyone tell yeah. me what that means? Yeah, Wayne Cram's been over for the week. He came to the uh, he came to the uh, Crawley game, um, and we he took us a few of us out to dinner on on Thursday at a really good night. And he gave a little bit of a special uh, a special sort of surprise for Tim. Yes, come on, Tim. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't. I literally did not see it coming at all. We were just having food uh, in the car carnivore. Lovely, and great, then, great, loved it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good, good, good food, and um, a couple of the Declan Swans lads came as well. It was just, it was just a good laugh. Anyway, he kind of broke uh, half halfway through the meal and said, "Oh yeah, we just want to thank the fearless because we obviously a lot of overseas fans get a lot of knowledge through the pod, and I was like, oh, it's nice, really nice to hear." And he said, "So we just wanted to give something back." And I was like, "What? You're going to start a podcast? Is this this is, is this what you're giving back? Is going to be a, another podcast? No offense to the others, it's all good, it's all fair, it's a fair field." Um, they went, "No, um, we decided that we want to sponsor a player in the fanzine's name." I'm like, "That's a bit mad." There's like you know, two home games at this point. There's two home games left. That's just wild. You know, you're not going to get much bang for your buck. And he said. Uh, I literally at this point I still didn't have a clue. I just thought of, they've sponsored Jake Bickerstaff and put Phyllis in devotion, which would be great. No, no offense to Jake, it'd be great. And he said, "We just want to thank you for that." And obviously, your your book of Conquer offerings. I was like, "Oh no, what's happening?" So basically, we've sponsored Arthur's third kit um, for, via the pod. So at the end of the season, you will get um, a an Arthur shirt. Um, nicely boxed coming to you so I was like wow so I was speechless I did I shed a tear when I got home because it was just a really 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 nice gesture and I shall I shall frame it all where it would pride on behalf of everybody and, yeah, and after that Tim said I will donate this shirt to a uh, to a fearless in devotion uh listener uh, so then, then, then I will mug said listener to get it back. <laughs> um, so no, but yeah, thank you. Uh, it's it, it's it's amazing. Thank you so much. So you know, yeah, just touched. And, um, I saw him post match yeah. yesterday as well. He's he was made up. He's a lovely guy, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, people go on about. I always hear this thing about. So like, oh, I'm really pleased for Wrexham's normal funds, but not for those who blah blah blah. And just from talking to him, you can tell how much some of the US fans have really bought into this club. And they're, for me, they're just as much a part of it as anyone else. Um, you know, he didn't have to take us out for grub. He certainly didn't have to, you know, sort out that sponsorship. So thanks very much to Wayne for that. Yeah, this isn't this isn't like, this isn't brown nosing. I mean, Wayne just kind of encapsulates a lot of that family. All that's good. Right. All All that's good. good. Like last night, you know, quarter to one in the morning in Spoons, he goes, oh, you need to come and have a look at this data that I've got. And he's he's got like all this data, the spreadsheets on his phone showing us where the lulls in defence, and we're like, what? The, what? This is get him on Notts County's analysis team. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it, it was it, it was it was it was, and and I, I, it's just mind blowing. And I, I love the fact that that he loved it, and everybody that came over who loved it, um, it it means everything. So it doesn't matter whether what whatever part of the globe you're from, however long you've been invested in, in this team for it doesn't matter because everybody's showing a, a massive deep seated love for the club in a short space of time and long may it continue really. Absolutely. And all that we just said is not related to the fact that he buys us things and is sponsoring things in our name. <laughs> I'll uh, sign the bribery act. No. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah quickly let's do predictions. I mean no one cares at this point, right? So but crew away players will be on the fourth day of a of a big hangover. Uh, Andy, quick prediction. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to go. Uh, I was supposed to go into the south of France, but I got I got a ticket. Uh, you hate France. I do hate France, but yeah, um, hate the French. Just go there a lot. I've, I've heard uh, I've heard Nice is nice though. So Nice is lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Chris Maxwell's gonna have gonna have my ticket. So um, shout at him if you see him. Uh, anyway, I think we. Cool. Gonna, Thanks for that backstory. Uh, What's your prediction for the match? Uh, one each. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. What's your prediction? I think we'll, I think we'll do him two nil, uh, and I think everybody should go dressed, dressed up, fancy dress. I don't know what. My goes Pavarotti. Seeing as I'm being put on the spot for Ness and Dorma next week, 
Excellent. Um, so I'll keep eating pizza like people might have saw me do earlier in this podcast. There you go. Liam? Uh, after the Lord Mayor's show, Rich Watkins filled them with booze and lovely bang-bang chicken. And we'll we'll lose 2-1, but no one will really care. Yep, I think now that there's no jeopardy, my pessimism has gone out the window, and I'm going to say that we're going to win 2-0. Um, crew seem to be struggling, so why not? Um, and obviously, it's local derby. Um, right, but anyway, thank you, everyone, for listening. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the good times. Enjoy if you're still out on the town at Monday. Um, I know, although, quick, quick, I'll be a bit worried shout, about you. A uh, quick late shout out to Matt from Racecourse Ramble and his good lady Kath because they've just ran uh, Manchester oh, well uh, Marathon for charity and raised near enough a grand uh, for charity. Oh, so, wow. yeah, so fair play. That's that's not an easy thing, especially the day after your side wins promotion. So, oh, fair yeah. play to those guys. Well done indeed. Yeah, well done, Matt and his missus. And I saw that Kevin Mulholland, uh, our head physio, also ran the Manchester Marathon today. Um, although it was a much slower time than I would that I would expect from him, so I anticipate that maybe there were some stoppages needed along the way. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for listening, and we'll uh, be back with you next week with a Book of a Conquo Ness and Dorma special. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers. Town are going up. Indeed, League One. <laughs>